In November 2009, thousands of emails from climate scientists were hacked in an event that became known as Climate Gate. If we can't trust the scientists on global warming... It's global then... warming fact or fiction. It was almost not about the science anymore. It was about the scientists behind it. And we're not prepared for this. The UN says it will investigate claims that British experts manipulated scientific data. Twin narratives emerged out of the scandal. One, from the majority of scientists, was that the world was warming and that the emails had been taken out of context. The other, from skeptics, was that the small number of emails showed misconduct amongst scientists and attempts to fabricate a pattern of global warming. How about Phil Jones? Quote, I can't see either of these papers being in the next IPCC report. Kevin and I will keep them out somehow. We were called in and told that we were not to speak to the media. There was nothing to hide. There was nothing to hide. The same kind of smear campaigns that were conducted against scientists uh, in the 1990s and 2000s is now being directed at these uh, spokespeople for, for the youth. I was working uh, here at the University of East Anglia at the time, and the thing went really quickly from a tiny, relatively minor incident to something really major. The emails were stolen from the University of East Anglia's Climatic Research Unit, a leading institution on man-made global warming. Please help the world. The hacking happened just weeks before the Copenhagen Climate Summit where world leaders gathered in hope of securing an agreement, but left without a solid commitment to reduce emissions. By many accounts, the Copenhagen summit was a failure. The hack of emails was part of a broader uh, sort of mood change where there was a lot of actions uh, to try and slow down the process, to try and stop the Copenhagen Agreement to take place. We were already 2009 at the level where we could have talked about action. I had about 400 emails in the, uh, in the hacked uh, email package. There was about 13 years of emails and then people were picking and choosing out of them and then people were kind of like putting together in weird orders that made it seem like one email was talking about this event when it was talking about something else entirely. And so there was a lot of confusion. And so we still had to uh, make the case that yes, the climate is changing and no, none of these emails impact that whatsoever. We do know that greenhouse gases are increasing because of human activity. The Climate Gate story was covered in the global media, including on Newsnight, who pitted this former UEA professor against US climate change skeptic Mark Morano. Hiding the decline tricks. I mean, this sounds appalling, doesn't it? It does absolutely sound awful. You're invited to believe uh, that what he's saying is uh, the world is actually cooling, uh, but this trick will try to convince the whole world that uh, it's actually warming. And, of course, it doesn't mean anything like that. It's been taken completely out of context. Yeah, Professor Watson's been all over saying this doesn't affect the case of global warming. His colleague, Mike Holm, at the University of East Anglia, is saying this is authoritarian science, is calling for the, suggesting this IPCC should be disbanded based on the climate gate revelations. George Monbiot is saying that many of his friends in the environmental and the, in the climate fear promoting business, as Professor Watson is, are in denial. You have to feel sorry for Professor Watson. He was quite clearly going to try to, to destroy the viewers trust in the scientists. I have to leave this, is, as you Warming both said, a very, very heated debate, literally. Well, well I have warm... to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. All Mark right, Morano and Professor Andrew Watson from the UA. What an asshole. <laughs> I thought that it was, you know, ludicrous uh, in, a, in a sense. If you get that many emails and then uh, you, you trawl through to find a couple of phrases in that which by taking them sufficiently out of context you can make it appear that they may be trying to do something underhand. That if you did that for absolutely anybody you'd be able to find uh, a, a phrase somewhere in their emails uh, that if you took it out of context would, in, would, would make it appear that they're doing something wrong. We approached Mark Morano, who was still a leading climate change sceptic, to ask his response to what Professor Watson said.
at that time, you know, that was the time, if you like, that climate scientists find, you know, realise that they were in the political world and anything goes. So that was the global media storm. But what about public opinion? It's hard to say conclusively, but let's fast forward to just months after Climate Gate, where here you'll see a small snapshot of people's opinions in London in 2010. Climate change is happening, but it's not yet proved that it's man-made. I personally don't believe climate change is happening. We've always had climate change. We lived in an ice age. If it wasn't for climate change, we wouldn't be here. To what degree really is the contribution by humans making towards this climate change? Together with a filmmaker, we went out on the street, we interviewed people. One of the things I try to do is to help climate scientists communicate their findings in a more understandable way to the public. About 10 years ago, most of the discussion, most of the disagreement was about is it happening or not and is it man-made or not. Then when it comes to the last couple of years, that disagreement has been shifting towards how serious is it going to be and what do we need to do to solve it. One of the positive impacts of the hack of email is that uh, climate scientists became much more available. A public understanding has changed massively, evolved massively since the past 10 years. Research carried out for Newsnight has found that UK political parties' mentions of climate change have been steadily increasing over the past year. We face a climate emergency and we must choose now how we respond. So let's wake up and wise up. There is no climate change problem. Of the political parties we analysed, most in the UK are treating climate change as a serious issue. But there's also been a rise of populist parties across the world, many of whom question the severity of climate change. President Trump in America, Brazil's President Bolsonaro, Germany's alternative for Deutschland, and UKIP in Britain have all raised doubts about the scientific consensus on climate issues. With climate change, there is so much, there is so much stuff that you can have that we can look at that evidence and we can either come to the conclusion that it's going to be a massive disaster. And then on the other side, we've got people who look at that same evidence and who say, there's nothing happening, there's nothing serious happening. While engagement with climate change has increased over the past decade, some believe that the techniques used to discredit scientists 10 years ago are still being used today. These children are speaking authentically. They look at what we're saying about what's happening to the world and what's going to happen to the world, and they are aghast that uh, the governing classes and, and, and governments around the world and institutions are not dealing with this in a manner that's commensurate with the size of the problem. Uh, but of course, it's, it's not a welcome issue for people who don't want anything to change. And so uh, the same kind of smear campaigns that were conducted against scientists uh, in the 1990s and 2000s is now being directed at these uh, spokespeople for, for the youth. Have people changed their minds? Remember those people from 2010? We tracked down some of them to find out how they feel now. Even though the science community will think like, no, no, we've answered these a long time ago, at least it hasn't reached people on the street. What still is going to happen is when it comes to uh, proposing climate policies, when it comes to proposing solutions, those are still going to divide people into opposing camps. As of today, the United States will cease all implementation 
of the non-binding Paris Accord.